Persona 3 is a good game. A fantastic game, even. If you've been following my channel for a while now, you know that I love this game. It contains a stellar soundtrack, a great cast of characters, and themes that deal in death, as well as the meaning of life. It's powerful stuff, and while I did find it to be an incredible game, it's not without its flaws. Persona 3 was the first installment directed by Katsura Hashino, who helped transform the series into the version we know today. But, unfortunately, it shows. The gameplay is very scant, and it's a far cry from how jam-packed Persona 5 is. I wouldn't even put it on the same level as 4 content-wise. So yeah, while Persona 3 is a pretty amazing game, it ain't perfect. Which is why so many fans have been eagerly awaiting a remake. A Persona 3 remake has been a pipe dream for many years. While rumors of it happening have circulated for a long time, they began gaining credibility after this piece of internal footage got leaked. Many fans weren't sure if it was real, myself included, but upon announcement, I was excited. A remake could build off of the improvements 4 and 5 introduced, and while the lack of FEMC was a bit disappointing, I was still optimistic. I noticed so many new additions throughout the trailers, so I knew it had to be a fresh experience. But really, I only wanted to know one thing when it came to Persona 3 Reload. Would it replace the original? I certainly thought it had the potential to, so I went in hoping for a revamped version of what I'd consider flawed excellence. And so, that's what I'll be answering in this video. But keep in mind, I already made an in-depth video on the original Persona 3, so if you want to hear my thoughts on the story, themes, and characters in this game, go watch that. Here I'll mainly be focusing on how Reload's changes affect the game overall. So with that, let's dive in. The first major difference you'll notice in Reload are the visuals. And, I mean, they speak for themselves. We're going from chunky PS2 models to crisp modern graphics, and it looks great. The visuals are clean, bright, and the lighting is especially nice in certain areas. I love the warm ambient light that shows up in so many of the locales, as it adds a nice sheen to these simple areas. But, like I said, the visual facelift this game received speaks for itself. It's a great update that breathes new life into the original source. One of the most drastic changes from the original to Reload is the UI. Upon first glance, it's easy to see that it takes a lot of influence from Persona 5's flashy style, but it has its own identity. Reload goes for a much subtler, elegant approach. Everything has this crisp sharpness to it that really pops out. The clean shapes, the bold, neutral fonts, the water effects, it all looks fantastic. The menu screens are probably my favorite part though. I love how the protagonist blends into the blue here, and that stat screen, effortlessly cool. Everything in this UI is composed in a pretty simple way, but it never fails to leave a striking impression. Plus, this more subtle approach just makes sense for Persona 3. This game has a more somber plot, and the clean UI complements that in a tasteful way. As far as other visual enhancements go, battles are much more dynamic, cutscenes have been redone, and the new character portraits are fantastic, even if I'll miss this frame of Junpei. I will admit, losing a lot of the goofier expressions is a bit of a shame, but they really did do a great job updating them. Everyone looks more detailed and clean. Also, their mouths on both the portraits and character models move in sync with the dialogue. That's cool, I guess. But speaking of dialogue, let's get into the brand new voice cast. This was something I was a tad worried about since the original cast was pretty much perfect. I wasn't sure what approach they would take, but upon hearing the voice acting in one of the trailers, my skepticism vanished. Reload's cast is extremely faithful to what came before. Junpei and Mitsuru sound especially similar to their PS2 counterparts, though the rest of the cast does sound a bit different, namely Akihiko. Thankfully I got used to the new performances quickly, since they keep much of the same spirit that made me fall in love with the original. In fact, Reload includes drastically more voice acting than the original. Obviously the main cutscenes are still voiced, but every single social link is fully voice acted as well. This is something Persona 5 didn't even have and I really enjoy it. You get a better sense of their personalities in these moments, which works even better for the side characters. 
Now if you've seen my original Persona 3 video, you'll know that I'm not the biggest fan of the secondary characters in this game. Many of them are purposely thorny, that much hasn't changed. But the new voice acting allows them to shine a bit more. Maiko remains to be one of my favorite side characters, and they did a great job casting her. She actually sounds like, well, a child and not an adult doing an Uwu voice. I'm looking at you English dub Anya, I'm looking at you. Chidori sounds as shy and timid as I imagined, and Yuko's voice surprised me in a way I didn't expect. When I played Fess, I wrote her off as being kind of annoying, but in Reload, she comes off as a regular chill girl. This charismatic tone actually made me like her a lot more than I did originally. She's one of the few people at school who's actually enjoyable to hang out with. There's no grooming, cults, or being a controlling douchebag. She's just teaching some kids how to run track. That's pretty nice. In fact, my opinion changed so much that I thought they updated her social link. But upon double checking on YouTube, that wasn't the case. She just feels more down to earth, and I'd go so far as to say that she's my new favorite classmate character. As a whole, the voice acting adds a lot to Persona 3 Reload. I'd say it creates a more engaging experience, and brings these characters to life even more than before. But before we get into the juicy gameplay, I want to talk about the soundtrack. The music in the original is no doubt fantastic. It featured a cool blend of rock, electronic, and hip-hop that resulted in some of my favorite Persona tunes. Much like the new voice cast, I was a bit worried about how the new soundtrack would sound given how much I love the music already. Thankfully though, they did a fine job. Reload features a combination of brand new songs and recreated tracks from the PS2 original. I'd say most of the recreated tracks are rock solid though. Vocally speaking, it's pretty on point, with the one exception being the new female vocals during the battle theme. She doesn't quite sell the passion the original carried, but her singing is pretty great on the other vocal tracks. Lotus Juice returns to deliver rap verses though, and he sounds just as good as he did before. He even drops a new chill verse on the Iwatodai dorm theme. But as for the instrumentation, much of the differences have to do with the tone or pitch of certain instruments. At least that's how it sounds to me. There's an overall cleaner, crisper sound when it comes to these tracks, but it remains very faithful to the original's vibe. It's still synthetic, it's still dancey, and it's still fun. However, there are some changes I could mention. Changing Season's horn section has been replaced with a pretty catchy vocal part. The vocal riffing in a deep mentality sounds less like an auto-tune crying baby, although I think the other elements of the song don't sound as good, mainly the guitar, and Iwatodai Dorm has been rearranged to sound a bit more chill. I think the only song I prefer in the original is Memories of the City. Reload captures the essence of the song pretty well, but in terms of the actual sound, I gotta go with the original version. Granted, that song really hit me during my first playthrough, so I knew it'd be hard to replace. The new songs are great too. I absolutely love the multi-phased opening theme, and Color Your Night is very smooth. It's the new evening theme, and it sounds a lot like something from Persona 5. The groovy bass, the organ, the laid-back feel, it all sounds straight out of that game. The song really fits that nighttime vibe, and there's a great singing performance from Lotus Juice. But with all of that out of the way, it's time to get into the gameplay. Now, I gotta say, Persona 3 Reload improves things on all fronts, and I say that with no exaggeration. The original was very scant compared to what would follow, which makes a sense considering it was the first in the style, but it feels unrefined these days. The only two things that I ended up doing in the evening were Tartarus and stat raising activities, as in drinking coffee. Lots and lots of coffee. This limited pool of activities can make the original Persona 3 feel repetitive, and if there isn't much going on in the story, these moments can seem like dead air. Reload on the other hand, oh man. Atlas took what they learned from developing the following entries and packed this game with brand new, refined content. You can still do the same stat raising activities from the original, but most of these places offer jobs now, which give you even more in return. Though, one of my favorite additions here is all of the activities you can do in the dorm. I mean, before it was just, go to Tartarus, or study in your room. 
but now you can plant vegetables on the rooftop, buy computer software to boost stats, cook food with your friends, read with your friends, watch TV with your friends, and join study sessions with them from time to time. Most of these fall under these new friend activities you can do when someone has a smiley face above their head. Not only do they give you stat boosts, but I love how you get these miniature character stories within them. Needless to say, Reload really fills this game with things to do. Things can get a little dull in the evening once you max out your social stats, but it's so much better overall. These options eliminate that repetitive feeling the original carried sometimes. I would even say it makes the pace feel more brisk, since you can switch things up every day. It creates a fuller experience for the player, which is what I mainly wanted to see from this aspect of Reload. There's a lot of other minor additions I can mention, but how about we get into the characters, shall we? The social links themselves haven't changed much. They're still mostly relegated to after school, so make sure you play your cards right. Although there are some subtle quality of life improvements when it comes to them. Characters can text you if they want to hang out, much like what Persona 5 did, and more obscure characters have been made a little more obvious in dialogue and menus. Oh, and you can actually choose who you date instead of having a harem, meaning I could officially go out with Mitsuru. There aren't a ton of new dates or anything, but it's nice having one-on-one -on -one moments with her. Yukari is still my runner-up though, and Yuko kinda snuck up on me by the end, I'm not gonna lie. But what about the male party members? As someone who played Fest right after 4, I was quite surprised by the lack of social links for the main male characters. In fact, I ended up being sort of disappointed by it, since I didn't find myself connecting with the secondary characters as I've mentioned before. Thus, one of my biggest hopes with Reload was having some kind of remedy to this, and they delivered big time. Now, within Persona 3's story, characters naturally develop throughout the game. This is something 4 and 5 didn't really do, with those games often relying on social links to show a character's progression. But it wouldn't make much sense to tack on social links to these male characters. Instead we get what are called linked episodes, and they're one of the best additions Reload has to offer. Each character gets 5 segments each, and they only open at certain times. This is because, contrary to social links, these scenes often feature the character commenting on something that just happened in the story. The point of these is not to tell brand new stories, but rather they deepen their characters beyond what the base plot offers. Sure, Junpei didn't need more development, but being able to have one-on-one -on -one personal conversations with him is very welcome in my book. And that fourth episode, damn, you just didn't get stuff like that in the original. These linked episodes are pretty faithful to their personalities as well, especially in the case of Akihiko. You see him test his morals as a fighter when encountering some thugs, and in the third episode, you get some deep insight into his background and how that made him into the man he is today. What I'm describing so far comes off more like extensions of these characters. They further explore what's already presented in their character, but some of these linked episodes go beyond that. In the original game, Ken was someone who brought a lot of drama to the story, but he wasn't a character I was ultra attached to. But with his linked episodes, they did a great job of expanding upon his character. Ken was always mature for his age due to his experiences, but I feel like these new scenes dive further into that precocious child element of his character. He talks about learning to sustain himself as an adult would, but you often see him get embarrassed by his childlike interests. I saw this as him believing he has to be stern and mature so he can live up to the standard he set for himself, but in episode 3, I wasn't so sure anymore. He seemed like he wanted to do things like watch TV to feel normal, which is pretty heavy considering the turmoil he had experienced with his mom passing away and his encounter with Shinjiro. Speaking of which, let's talk about him. Out of any of the main characters, Shinjiro has one of the biggest improvements when it comes to his character development. It's insane, really. In the original, Aragaki was certainly important to the story, but when it came to interactions, it was pretty surface level. I didn't find myself very connected to his character, which does make sense considering his standoffish demeanor, but Reload really flips this notion on its head. Through linked episodes, we see Shinjiro grapple with Mitsuru's request to come back to school, and the conversations you get to have with him really stuck out to me. 
He's a nice person deep down, but he's very stern and distant. This leads to some interesting dialogue, and many of the response choices feel unique compared to other characters in the game. There's this tension that hangs in the air due to his stone cold personality, and it can feel intimidating, almost as if my words don't matter. He's someone who cannot be swayed, at least that's how it seems. These linked episodes explore some interesting backstory regarding him and C's, and while I won't spoil too much, he ends up doing something very selfless in the end. This whole side of his character was completely non-existent in the original game, but now I could see him for who he really is, and he feels more tangible because of that. I definitely cared about him a lot more. But yeah, as you can see from all of this, there's a lot more opportunities to hang out with your teammates. Not only are there those dorm activities I mentioned, but even something like study sessions can provide some great insight into what these characters are feeling. They happen around each exam, and the characters will usually comment on whatever's going on in the story around that given time. But there's still a ton of fun to watch, and there's plenty of funny moments. I love additions like this since it adds so much more depth to this cast. In fact, I found myself liking the characters in Persona 3 even more than I did before. Those who I was more lukewarm on before now feel like close friends. I understand their personalities, interests, backstories, and personal drives that much more. But, most importantly, you can hang out with Koromaru, brush Koromaru, watch TV with Koromaru, and pet Koromaru. This is the greatest game to ever exist. To wrap up the gameplay, let's dig into the combat. And guess what? It's completely improved. First of all, Tartarus. This 200 plus floor dungeon was, and still is, a massive part of Persona 3, but it was never the most enjoyable part of the game. In the original, it was repetitive, visually dull, and it could get pretty tedious after long spans of time. Granted, the game lets you spread out your visits into smaller chunks, but it was never something I was super excited to do all the time. Thankfully though, Reload definitely improves things. I mean, is it as fun as Mementos? Not really. In fact, the repetition is still an issue I have with Tartarus. You're still trying to scale to the top, and there's still lots and lots of battles you must endure. It can still get boring after a while, but the improvements Reload makes to the layout and battle system make it far more enjoyable. With the former, the entire tower was given a visual makeover. Each floor is even more unique from each other than before, and there's a lot of dynamic visual elements that spice things up when you're exploring. On top of that, you can find special treasure chests that can be opened with twilight fragments. There are these new red doors that hold a rare treasure blocked by strong shadows. And there's also something called the Great Clock Door. Finding one of these will grant the ability to level up two party members to the same level as the protagonist, which is pretty sweet. All of this creates a more fleshed out exploration experience, but the revamped battle system does wonders all around. The automated party system present in the original is fairly contentious. Some people such as myself don't mind it, while others can't get into it. And understandably so. It's not exactly common for turn-based strategy games to remove control from the player. It's still an option in Reload, but everything defaults to direct controls. It's definitely the intended playstyle for this version. So that's cool, but it's far from the best part of this new battle system. It takes a lot of cues from Persona 5's combat, which is a great thing. If I had to describe how the battle system is improved in Reload, I would say that there's a lot more kinetic energy when playing. Actions are mapped to buttons making things quick and easy, the battle animations are great, and they actually added the baton pass mechanic from 5. Well, sort of. In Reload it's called shifting, and the characters you pass to don't get an attack boost. This was a bit disappointing, but being able to juggle turns around adds to that momentum I mentioned a second ago. The biggest addition to the combat, however, is Theurgy, and these go hard. Each character has these meters that fill up throughout the battle, and once they hit max, you can unleash a massive attack on the enemy. Are they a bit broken? Sure, but they're a ton of fun to use. I love to beat an enemy down, lower their defense, and wail a ton of Theurgy attacks on them for loads of damage. Plus you get these sick, dynamic animations along with it. How could you not love these? It really adds to the energy of these battles, and it feels great to play. Even if you're up against a tough boss, it's a lot of fun to strategize and take them down. I still think Persona 5 has the edge when it comes to combat, 
but Reload holds its own in a great way. So, to go back to the question I already posed, does Persona 3 Reload replace the original? Well, for me, yes. Absolutely yes. Reload breathes so much new life into this game, and it's to a point where I see no reason why you'd go back to the original. Are you really going to tell me that you'd go back to the old, barren nightlife? No! I'm sure some people will continue to have nostalgia for the original, which makes sense, but I really feel like Reload is a much fuller and better version of this game. The fleshed out sim elements, the more fluid gameplay, full voice acting, and especially the extra time spent with your teammates are too good to ignore. I can't stress how much these extra character events deepen your connection with them, and they deserve it. Persona 3 always had good characters, but Reload allows so much of their personalities to shine, and because of this, I like this cast even more than I did before. Reload just feels so much better to play. It's fluid, it's vibrant, and most of all, it's fun. Persona 3 already had loads of enjoyable elements, and this remake just reinforces those things with better gameplay. It really does improve upon the original in every way possible. Well, that's a bit of a hyperbole. One thing I can nitpick is actually something that was pointed out by the Mega10 YouTuber Bubble Tea. He makes fire videos on various games in the franchise, and in his video about Reload, he pointed out how the cutscene direction is occasionally a downgrade. At first I wasn't sure about this take, but I think it's true for certain moments. For one, the intro is a lot less tense, and I'm not a fan of how they recreated the cutscene taking place after the final boss. In the original, there was no dialogue, and having Aegis silently cry upon seeing that the protagonist is alive is one of the most powerful moments in the game. Meanwhile, Reload completely lacks that same emotional punch. There's more dialogue, and Aegis outright questions why she won't stop crying, it just feels a lot less dramatic, and I'm not a fan. Also, one of my favorite lines of dialogue from Aegis at the very end isn't really present in Reload. I can tell that it was just reworded, but considering how I ended my original video on it, the line meant a lot to me, so it was sad not having those specific words in Reload. But visually speaking, the final cutscene with Aegis is very beautiful. Just wanted to throw that out there. Other than those things though, I think Reload stays very true to the original story and preserves its themes in the process. If anything, the deeper character interactions only serve to expand upon it. To me, Reload is the absolute definitive version of this game. It keeps the essence of the original while refining what didn't work before, along with adding in refreshing new content. Basically, they made a great game even better, and I'm glad new and old fans alike can experience the ultimate version of Persona 3. But before I leave, I have one more question. Should Atlas remake Persona 4? No. At least, not yet. I didn't touch on this in the video, but despite how much better Reload is, it's still my least favorite of the trilogy. Persona 5 is a lot more fun to play, and 4 is just so special. The characters, the music, the events, it all warms my heart. So, yes. Would I like to see Persona 4 get the same level of treatment as Reload? Of course. I mean, could you imagine walking around Inabo with an amazing graphical facelift, or trekking through the dungeons with a modern combat system? It'd be awesome, but I don't think it's totally necessary. I'd love to see Persona 6 more than anything, and I'm sure a lot of people wouldn't mind seeing remakes of Persona 1 and 2 in the future. Did somebody say Persona 1 and 2? When's the review row? Will you shut up? Besides, it's not like Persona 4 is unplayable. Sure, it's graphically dated, but the gameplay is pretty polished, and there's a lot of quality of life elements. Not to mention the story and characters are damn near impossible to resist. I haven't gone back to 4 in a while, but I'm sure I'd love it as much as I did before, even if it's technically the most dated of the trilogy at this point. I'm sure it'll happen one day, and if Atlas decides to go for it soon, I wouldn't be opposed but I think I'm good with Reload for now. It's a fantastic experience, and I'm glad we have such a polished version of this game for people to experience. When I played the original Persona 3, I saw its flaws for sure, but its themes were really special. It's something I thought a lot of people could appreciate if they gave it a chance, but now with Reload being out, that barrier to entry is gone. 
So, if you haven't played Persona 3 but want to, Reload is the perfect option. Just be sure to see it through to the end. You won't regret it. Arizona, mucho mango.